Okay, so we've got our slots and our holes, and they all line up, it's exactly what we wanted. Now we can put this uh, sliding clamping plate aside, and what we want to do is create some small recesses on the underside of these holes so that our T-bolts, which are included in your kit, sit flush on the underside rather than sticking out because they, they have about 1.5 mil of metal on the head of that bolt. So in your kit, there is also these fantastic little keyhole router bits and we're gonna be using that to create a T-track in our sacrificial fence later but they also will do a fantastic job of creating these little recesses that we need. So we're gonna do those, create those recesses from underneath and we're gonna leave our fence exactly where it is because that way we know that the uh, router bit will line up with the hole. We're going to drop that router bit so that the amount of blade exposed is only a fraction deeper than the amount of metal on a T-bolt head. And the way we're gonna check that is by lowering it right down to where we think it is, think it's correct, running a piece of scrap over it and checking that T-bolt depth in that recess. Once the T-bolt is sitting just below the surface, we are gonna hold this over that router bit so that the center of the router bit lines up with our hole, making sure that we've got all of our markings facing up. So we put it down and all we need to do is shuffle a little to the left and a little to the right. Usually, I find if I can line up as it's spinning, you can usually see the center of that router bit. And I can, you start with the center of the router bit in the center of the hole, and then you take the center of the router bit to the left of the hole and the right of the hole, and that will be enough of a rebate. So you'll see me doing this in action. It's uh, pretty straightforward. I'm gonna start by setting the depth of that router bit, and then I will do those rebates, and you'll see what I'm talking about, hopefully. The next thing we're going to be doing is uh, marking the location of the mitre slider on the underside of your base. We need to do this carefully so it can be set the correct distance from the blade or uh, the center of that router bit. What we're actually going to be doing is once we've set that mitre slider in position, we're going to be using your coping bit or another large router bit, something with the diameter larger than 22 mil, which I'll explain in a second, to trim off that edge closest to the blade. The reason we're doing this, even though we already have a nice square straight edge, is we need to make sure that this edge is square, perfectly square, to the mitre track. Because this uh, coping jig runs along the track rather than the fence, we need to always have a reference uh, to make sure that it is directly perpendicular to our mitre track, and this is the best way to do it. For the first thing, you need to have a mitre track in your router table. If you don't, you can pretty easily install one using some aluminium T-track. Uh, if you need some assistance on installing aluminium T-track, have a look at the, uh, the video that we did on creating a tapering jig, and that kind of goes through the process, not for installing T-track in a router table, but it goes through the process of installing T-track in something else, and the process is, is basically the same. I'm gonna measure the distance from my mitre track to the center of my router bit here, which is, in my case, 140 millimeters. So I want my mitre slider on the underside of this to be essentially 140 millimeters from that edge. But I don't need this edge to go right to the center of that router bit because I'm going to be cutting a fair bit off anyway. I'm going to end up cutting off about 20 millimeters.